got a ton of things to talk about today, yeah. but um, luckily, Jack Smith and Joe Biden and Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama and the rest of the uh, left wing uh, apparatus put together some fake charges against Donald yeah. Trump, and no. he is now indicted for the th unbelievably the third time. Uh, and this time it is for January 6th, which is. I mean, for me, was an obvious one, and uh, the fact that it it took as long as it did tells me it is as detailed as it could possibly be, right. and everything that we should see coming out because we saw a whole uh, January six committee, right. uh, it, it, a bipartisan one, even with a couple of Republicans on there, mm -hmm. uh, and we saw a lot of stuff come out. And while watching it, most of us with the capacity to understand what actually happened, wondered how is this guy not indicted? And now it's happened. Right. I'm just kind of sad that um, like it took Merrick Garland so long to, you know, pass the baton wow. <laughs> to Jack Smith. I don't know if they were trying to find who they wanted to use. It just seems like it took so much time because now we're under this, these deadlines and this crunch to get, you know, Florida, that is not going to happen. Uh, mm -hmm. That documents case before um, the next election. It's impossible because you're dealing with the security, the documents, national security, who can look at them. People have to get, you know, permission, all of that. This one is going to take us uh, right up to the line, but mm -hmm. it's going to have to be a speedy trial. So thank God it's in D.C. So hopefully yes. we can push it through. Um, yeah, I, I think we have a good chance of it being what I guess would be considered a speedy trial right. um, in, in this one. You're, you're probably right that um, that uh, the 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 other one, the documents case may not happen until before the election. Um, but you never know. Uh, I mean, we have a Trump appointed judge on the documents case and she's already proven to be a little sketchy on some of right. the rulings that she made. And I think it probably was something that pushing it out until May was probably something that she probably thought that this might be a perfect time because you can delay it probably from there, especially now that we have more indictments that have been added on top. Uh, there's a lot of moving parts there, but let's start obviously with the, no, actually I am starting because I made the mistake last week of, I said, every podcast I'm going to be on, regardless of whether it's mine, anybody else's, or I am going to mention what a phenomenal job Joe Biden has been doing. Mm -hmm. And I didn't do it last week and I'm doing it before we start the show this week. Joe Biden has been a phenomenal <laughs> president and anybody that is not that does not have the same opinion there. You're either biased, you have some sort of partisan uh, issue with Joe Biden, right. but Joe Biden has done an excellent job. If you look at every economic number that right. has been going on under his presidency, and I've said before, I'm not saying that he's responsible for every single bit of it, but I promise you any president that right. had these economic numbers would be beating their chest, raising their hands in celebration. Now, of course, we are not where we need to be quite yet, right. but it is what has happened economically is really even shocking the so-called experts. Right. But he saved us from a recession because now they're actually saying they don't believe it's even going to happen. It's funny. I was in the grocery store the other day. Uh, yesterday was the other day. And I'm looking at like the snacks and I saw like, you know, they're starting to come down a little bit and they're having the deals again. You know what I mean? Where you get two for five. Like that just was not happening maybe yeah. six months ago. It was what it was. And cereal eggs, all of that was so much, but the prices are ticking down a little bit more. So I was like, thank you, Joe. <laughs> Let's put the on the, I did that, you know, to uh, on all the prices by, and again, we're not where we need to be. There is no yes. right, fear is, um, you know, there are a lot of people saying, well, there is not going to be a recession. We're not, I don't think anybody knows that I have, sure. I, um, uh, sort of 
compare this to watching. I'm a big sports fan. I could sit there and watch sports experts give me their take on the game and what they think the score is going to be. Just because they're so-called experts doesn't mean that that's necessarily going to be what the score is. Right. But um, my, my fear would be is if that somehow in the next six months or so, we do start seeing a recession and jobs start to be lost a little bit here and there right. that, you know, it's you're almost going to be able to look back and go, you guys were celebrating a little bit too early. But for right now. I'm going to celebrate because there's nothing that's going to happen to me if I celebrate early other than maybe. You know what they happen? Like, seriously. And they're doing, you, you're you right, and I know we have to move on, but they, they are doing a good job because they're still doing those incremental increases. Yeah. <laughs> with it. So that's a good thing that they're like, okay, we're just going to skip this one. They're still doing it. But AI... Mm -hmm. You know, that introduction, I think, is going to start to change things a little bit for us. Because did you hear, like, I forgot what grocery store it is that's totally AI. Like, it's no people in there that's waiting on you. Like, it's, it's just... I, I have not heard of that, but I don't, that might freak me out a little bit. And <laughs> I'm I'm all for convenience. I was talking to my brother the other day. We talk about Amazon, and Amazon is... I mean, it, there's a lot of bad things to say about Amazon, but there's a lot of great things to say about I've Amazon. I've been getting very mad. Every, the past few items I've gotten from Amazon, it's like they're not packing them right and they're just throwing them and they're exploding. I'm like my, really? my hair stuff. A, a, a thing of like a gel, right? I get it. I opened a package and it wasn't even in a box. So it was in like a manila envelope and it was all over it. So like, it's hard to get somebody like to talk to you on the phone. And then she's like, well, can you send back the damage? I'm like, absolutely not. How? What do you yeah. want to scoop it out of yeah, this? You're right, right. <laughs> yeah. But in another day, I bought dry uh, shampoo for the dog. That too, just really? in like one of them containers. And like, it's just seeping, all of it seeping out of it because they're not packing it. I don't know if it, it's the one day that the thing that, you know, you want it fast and maybe they have it in the warehouse. I don't yeah. know. I yeah. don't know. But Well, let's say Amazon sucks now though. So how about that? I mean, <laughs> I understand why you would, you know, the, the, the hair product stuff for you would them. be important. Yeah. Love yeah. I still yeah. love them because I can get, you know, the dog food overnight <laughs> Right. Yeah, exactly. I mean, they do. I let's say everything I've ordered so far, and even if I have to send something back, I, let's. I don't want to turn this into a yeah a, any kind of Amazon, uh, pitch. But anytime I have to send something back, it's the easiest thing in the world, yeah. and they cry it. But anyway, yeah. let's yeah. get to the big news. I'm going to share a screen here, and I hope this works. I think it will. Um, Hi, wanna... Steph. I think that's says Steph. I can't. I yeah. Oh. Yes, Steph. Hi, Steph. Actually, <laughs> if, do you remember? You remember Steph? No. She was on the um, podcast with you, me, and she was oh, on with it. Yeah. Hi, Steph. <laughs> yeah, you remember her. Okay, so I'm going to switch screens here. I'm assuming I'll still be on the screen. Am I still on? Yes. Okay, good. All right, so um, Donald Trump has been uh, indicted for a third time. Let's uh, go a little bit over the article here. A grand jury indicted former President Donald Trump on Tuesday for a raft of alleged crimes in his brazen efforts to overturn the results of the 2020 election. The, later, uh, the latest legal and political aftershock stemming from the riot at the U.S. Capitol two and a half years ago. The 45 page, by the way, I love reading these indictments. I can't wait to read this one. I don't know. I just, I love reading the indictments. I listen to every second of that phone call that Trump made to uh, Raffensperger and, you know, Atlanta. I, I, I just I love it. I think it's fantastic. So I can't wait to read the indictment. But anyway, the four count, 45 page indictment accuses Trump of three distinct conspiracies mm -hmm. uh, charging that he conspired to defraud the U.S., yep. uh, conspired to obstruct an official proceeding and conspired against people's rights. Disenfranchised so, voters like the nerve of you. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it, <laughs> you know, it is it's. Let's do this role play with me for here for a second, Lana. Sure. All right. I want you, let's go back to 2015 before all this craziness has happened. Okay. And you own a movie studio. <laughs> all right. And you, I'm coming in to pitch my screenplay to you. And the screenplay goes like this. 
there's a guy who is going to be revered that is foul mouthed. Mm -hmm. He is a lifelong con man. He has ruined every single business he's put his hands on. The only reason why he has money has money is because his dad passed away and he received a large amount from that. He scammed his way through life. He uh, is somehow revered by evangelicals and he is going to run for president of the United States. He somehow beats one of the best candidates in the history of this country. Then after four years, he gets beat in an election and then he starts a basically a riot to overturn the election. And then subsequent after he subsequently, he is charged five different times and will be facing trial five different times within maybe a year, year and a half period. How quickly would you call security to have me removed? after pitching that idea as a movie. It's crazy. Like it doesn't even sound believable. And that's why it's so crazy that magas don't believe it because who's making that? Like who can even put in their head to do this to one person? You know what I mean? Like, are they like, oh, this is all, it's a witch hunt. All of them? Yeah. Part? Like, <sighs> you know, if you, all of these are <laughs> doesn't even make any sense but all of this is a witch hunt but the one thing that they have a text message of hunter biden saying the big guy is all, it, it, joe biden and the biden crime family yeah he's he's Bi yeah he's biden, be in jail he's like the mastermind but he has dementia like make it make sense maga is like that just makes no sense Wh which one is it yeah, I did. did you see the um, the witness that they called in Hunter Biden's uh, business partner, Devin? Um, yes, I can't yes. remember his last I can't name. Remember I'm sorry, his name either. But yeah, but yes. they he basically came in and said, "Yeah, I had business dealings with Hunter Biden. Every once in a while, he would act like he was some big shot with his dad, but there was nothing between me, uh, Hunter Biden, and his father. No business dealings, right. and you know." These guys like Jim Jordan and James Comer will still go on uh, on the channels and go, I, I think we're going to get them. And they're yeah. like, well, they just basically said, and they're like, no, we'll, we'll figure something else out. They, well, they had to, right? Because all they were doing today was deflection. So you knew, you knew it was coming today. Like yeah. you felt it because they were like, on my timeline, it was like, uh, who's uh, Trump's old doctor, Ronnie Jackson. Yeah, Ronnie Jackson. Bobart. And I think... MT like all in a row yeah. talking about the same thing on my timeline. I'm like, oh, they're afraid this yeah. is happening today. <laughs> like, By the way, I want to add that in my movie script that there <laughs> is a uh, woman in Congress who actually had an interview on a major network news uh, program, 60 Minutes, yeah. where she said that Democrats were pedophiles and... <laughs> Then you have other people saying they drink blood of children and it's, it's, it's just, it's, you know, I just, can we go back to this indictment? Because it's so stunning that there are six co-defendants and in the co-defendants, there are attorneys. Like, are you serious right now? You got Rudy, of course, you have Eastman, you have the crazy Sidney Powell, like how, it's it's really true like making attorneys get attorneys because this is insane right now yeah i mean it is but, insane's really the only word you shake your head and you're like i just don't understand how and you know there's even some people that i have spoke to that have some modicum of intelligence you know that something but they still are arguing against all this or and it just blows my mind. I just can't, I can't wrap my, my yeah, head around it. Like they didn't hear it. Like if somebody's saying there are tapes, are you not going to Google to say, oh my God, let me hear what it, you know what I mean? Like it's this, just that simple. We know Fox isn't playing it. We get it. But it's just that simple, just a simple Google. They're saying he's on tape. Let me see for myself. Yeah. I, I think it's almost like if you avoid the subject, it didn't happen kind of thing. And that's yeah. probably what it is. In fact, I saw a poll yeah. not that long ago that um, there was a stunning amount 
when I say stunning, even 15 to 20 percent of people when asked about the documents case said that Donald Trump didn't even have documents in his house. Donald Trump actually admits that he has documents in his yeah. house, but you have 20 percent of people saying, no, he didn't even have them in the house. It's, yeah, they're lying. Yeah, and they're lying. Like they're lying because at first he was like, crazy. they planted them. They planted them. So everyone was saying they planted the documents. Oh, yeah, yeah. He was yeah. Like, yeah. They're all my documents. They're, they're, they're his documents. Oh no, I declassified. <laughs> my head is spinning. <laughs> it, it, it truly is amazing. Well, over over the last week, we also had a few, mm -hmm. we, as we spoke about earlier, we had a couple of extra um indictments added to the documents case. Um, three new federal uh, criminal charges, and a third defendant was added. Uh, you know, first, <laughs> everybody that surrounds themselves, yeah. you yeah. know, or or Donald Trump surrounds himself with, or brings Everyone. into the fold, is going down at some point. The yeah. poor maintenance guy, yeah. his life is now fucked yeah. because what he did was he found a couple of expendable people yeah. that he said. Just get these two idiots to delete, to, you know, get and, you know, we'll just let them take the fall for it if they if they get caught. Yeah. But <laughs> I, I don't know if you saw the uh, the details of um, mm -hmm. of some of these the these flashlight. clowns <laughs> trying to the flashlight. <laughs> this gentleman's name is Carlos D. Oliveira, and he was the head of maintenance and he in cahoots with that Walter Nada, the other clown who refuses yeah. to give Donald Trump up, uh, they got in touch with each other and they met up in an obscure location. Oliveira walked for 20 minutes through the bushes on the northern edge of the Mar-a-Lago property to meet Nada at a property adjacent to the club. Oliveira walked back to the IT director's room and then walked back through the bushes to where he had met Nada. And this is all in order to figure out a way to delete any surveillance video. And the beauty of this is, is they got caught on surveillance video <laughs> trying to delete the surveillance video. You just can't, you know what? This actually, maybe the script is a comedy. Hmm. A, a, a horror movie slash comedy. <laughs> Cause it's yeah. just, this is just, oh my you know, it just leaves you speechless. Like, I I don't even know how to feel about it, right? Like, I'm definitely happy all of this is happening to Trump yeah. because he deserves it. And it's 100%. From home to roost. But then it's just like, I feel not bad for the people who are voting for them, but they're just so, like, not informed. Like, a lot of them are just who they are, but a lot yeah. of them just really are not informed. These two guys, D. Oliveira and Walt Nada, I really think, like, what else are they going to do? They're probably, like, they can't afford an attorney, so they probably believe that Trump's attorneys are really helping them. Well, but Trump they, said he was going to get them attorneys. Yeah, right. And they think that they're going to help them because they're not going to be as smart as Cassidy, right? Cassidy was smart. She's like, wait, oh, wait a minute. They, this doesn't sound like this is not my benefit. It's right. like they're not going to know that these two guys. And, and when you say Cassidy, you're talking about Cassidy Hutchinson, Cassidy, who, yes, who yes, um, yes. testified for the, in front of the January 6th committee. Right, because remember he gave, he got her an attorney too. And then she was like, oh no, this mm -hmm. is not for my benefit. And then she, you know, told the whole story how she went to her dad, tried to ask for help, you yeah. know what I mean? Until she got her own attorney. Like, that's crazy. And that's exactly what's going on with Walt Nada. Like, these fools. And now it's too late because nobody needs your, no one needs you to flip anymore. That's exactly right. And I'm guaranteeing you that Jack Smith and who his team probably gave them ample opportunity. Yes. And yes. it said, oh, this yes. is your last try. And yes. if you say no, and they were just, they're so loyal to, mm -hmm. to Donald Trump, like so many people are. But everybody yes. that's loyal to Donald Trump either detaches themselves from Donald Trump and then winds up going on either social media or other news networks and right. saying what a nightmare this guy was. Right. Part of that's noble. Part of it's kind of like, fuck you. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, at, at least you, you are, at least you're calling it out. Right. Um, or you have these other people who just, 
are going to go to the death for him. And some of them so pathetically, like a Lindsey Graham or a um, uh, uh, Kevin McCarthy. Yeah. Yeah. Lindsey. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, it's, it's so weird. This Lindsey Graham goes on the floor after January 6th and says, I'm done with them. That's enough. I've had enough of this Trump. And then two days later, he's like, Mr. Trump, what do you need me to do? Kevin McCarthy, same thing. Yeah. This is ridiculous. I'm over. Yeah. He's actually recorded on a phone yeah. call saying that we think he should just step aside. Yeah. All that stuff. Two days later, he's at Mar-a-Lago kissing right? his ass. And yeah. it's pathetic. And these guys, I'm, 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 it's under my impression that all the MAGA men are supposed to be these macho, big time, you know, uh, uh, alpha males. Right. I, mm-hmm. I, I, I don't see it. I, I don't see it at all. I see a bunch of pussies. And I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, just but, I it. mean, it's the, the projection. Like, it, And so is Trump, right? Because that's who, those are the people who rape and yeah. sexually assault, right? Yeah. So that's who he is. He is a pussy. Like, he's, yeah. he's a punk. Yeah. Yeah. He really is. <laughs> and with some money. Yeah. I mean, it's, um, it, it, it's quite a scene. And I just can't even, I, I can't even bring myself to imagine what 2024 is going to be like. Yeah. It's going to be the strangest, partially saddest, partially happiest, right. uh, you know, right. time in American history. 